Hey, it's the Chief Bonding with Board Games and RPGs, and GMT just sent me Rebel Fury, which is a Mark Herman game. This one's called Battles of the American Civil War, and I'm going to talk about these specific battles here. But some of you may have known that with C3I series or in the magazine, Mark Herman did a game there as well. Then they came out with the Deluxe Edition, which is what this is. And of course, it covered Gettysburg. Now, that was so successful, there was a Waterloo version, but now they've got the Rebel Fury. And here we're talking, I know you can't quite see it. Maybe I'll throw in a photo. Maybe I'll just explain it. Fredericksburg and Chancellorsville. Chickamauga. Never know if I'm saying it right. I'm sure I got it right. Chickamauga. I don't know. Chattanooga. I know Chattanooga. And the Wilderness in Spotsylvania. So just to come up just a little bit. Very nice. You can see fairly thick. It's already started to come undone here. And we have the back with, you can see, multiple different maps. So let me get it open just so you can take a look and see what is inside. And my nail just got her done. All right. The other thing I wanted to point out is volume one. Volume one. So they're talking about having a, a continuing series that will hopefully, eventually, maybe, allow you to play every battle in the Civil War. Very cool. Come on, come on, come on. All right, I've got it situated. We've got some extra bags. Always nice, always good. Uh, we've got some, these are a little lighter. Got some dice with some, what is this, a wounded soldier, an explosion. So some very individualized dice. The playbook, let's take a look and see. All right, full color with what looks like, yes, design notes or all these um, butternut colors. So you can hear what Mr. Herman's thinking. Battle of Fredericksburg. All right, the setup. Battle of Chancellorsville. All right, I won't go through every page. There's the wilderness. So from playing Gettysburg, here's designer notes. Again, very nice. You're going to get a cornucopia of designer notes, and it's always great. I've had Mark on the show. Blast to talk to. Um, let's see. So, we've also got the rules of play. Having played Gettysburg, not this, I can tell you it was very um, easy to get into. Very easy to understand. Of course, I haven't played this yet, but my understanding is it's very, very, very similar I can't say identical, but all right, so here's the rules. Very nice. Again, lots of explanations, lots of breakouts. There's play notes. All these now are play notes in this color. And then designer nuts. Nuts? Sorry. Designer notes. <laughs> notes in the butternut. Wow. I did work all day today. Some great um, large maps to show you. Uh, and then explain what's being talked about. So the rules um, were quite simple and straightforward when I played Gettysburg. How many pages? 24. 24 pages. Nice sequence of play on the back and an attack resolution. I got to tell you again, I love this from GMT. They don't just put, you know, not that a nice little artwork on the back isn't nice, but this now serves as a player aid. So, you know, it's out on the table in case you got a reference, but it's sitting over there for you to just kind of work through um, an attack resolution or sequence of play. Genius. Genius. Helper aids or player aids. Uh, one for each player. This is a two-person game. And there we go. There's our, our terrain effects. Again, a little bit of shine to them. Very nice. Card stock. Great quality as you expect from GMT. Uh, looks like just remaining moves and attacks. And maybe going by the date. I can imagine you might have units that arrive at certain times. I'm sure. 
Union off map display. Hmm. Very cool. All right, let's look at these. Bring these up. Counter sheet one front. Back, obviously go ahead and pause, zoom in if you want to see anything. This is the first I've looked at it as well. I can already tell they're punching out very easily. There you go. No problems. What is this one? Counter sheet front two. All right. And we're going to have the maps. Let me kind of get these out, and then what I'll do is unfurl each one, and you'll be able to see them in their entirety. Wow, these are very nice, kind of a, um, it doesn't have that shiny coating, but it's got that nice plasticized feel to it. Good maps. We'll open up each one of these individually, but you can see, see if I can show it. They're fairly substantial already. All right, let me get this out of the way and I'll open the maps up one at a time. All right, this is the Wilderness and Spotsylvania. Let me pan through very large map, not sure the dimensions, but you can see the box, standard game size box, and gives you an idea of the dimension of the map. Let me come back over and I'm gonna come up over top. Of course, you can see the bigger river, you can see some other uh, smaller rivers kind of portrayed through and maybe, whoops, a ridge or a mountaintop here. All right, I tried to come up over top and it didn't help that much. So let me see if I can just zoom in. All right, that's pretty good. You can see our hexes and you can just still see kind of um, how the rivers will flow along those hexes. Um, moving across so that it's very clear, you know, which side of the hex is the river. Um, what else to see here? I do want to come over to this little mound. All right, I zoomed in a little bit on Laurel Hill as well. I am no American Civil War expert. Um, let me show you. These are not double-sided maps, but you've got three of them. Let me grab the next one. All right, I'm backed off again. This is Chickamauga and Chattanooga. So we'll again come around and just kind of side. It's the exact same size map. You again have the box for comparison. And let me come back over and we will just zoom in on some of the detail. So here we can see these different ridges that are coming along. And again, I'm no expert on the battle, but this look like some difficult terrain to negotiate. So, now I can tell, although I may not be the expert, Mark Herman is. So, and there is a very, he and I had a discussion, if memory serves, on Gettysburg, and it was the idea to capture a situation the units involved, and then how you might play them. So you could play historically, but it allows you to play ahistorically and try different things without the system constraining you. Now, again, I haven't played Rebel Fury, but that was you know, a real exciting prospect. I can do historically what happened if I know, or I can make my own moves or I'm such an expert and I always felt like if I could have just done X, well, let's see how X would run. Next map. All right, Fredericksburg and Chancellorsville. And my apologies, I have family in the house. The air condition is running and you could hear it in the last filming. My apologies. So again, very, I mean, different terrain, same map quality, same single size, so you can see our single sided map, um, but I'll zoom in on a few things here as well. Might as well be Fredericksburg. It's, and so we can see some of that detail and I'll just slowly pan over so you can see some of the different terrain features. All right, 
I started to think Charlie Kibler. Yes, I just looked at the back of the box. Charlie Kibler did these maps. Art direction, uh, Justin Martinez. Game development, Jason Carr, we know from uh, GMT1. Uh, but Kibler, I've interviewed on the show as well. Go check that out. Some of the prettiest maps you'll ever see. Lovely, gorgeous maps back into the Avalon Hill days, and I'm sure many other game company as well. Companies as well. See you guys. Bye.